A two-decade protracted Afghanistan war is officially over with all mandated U.S. troops gone. And while the U.S. President Joe Biden has defended his decision as best available option in the interest of his country, a humanitarian crisis is appearing imminent in Kabul. With currency plunging, markets shut and services halted due to a constant atmosphere of fear, an upside downturn of events has put everybody in a spot of bother. Last night in Kabul, the United States ended 20 years of war in Afghanistan, the longest war in American history. While talking about the conclusion of a chaotic evacuation from Afghanistan that also became a cause of killings of several locals and Americans, the U.S. President Joe Biden said that Washington couldn't have done anything different or better. He has in fact referred to it as a success, citing evacuation of more than 123,000 people from Kabul since 14th August when the Taliban swept over the country. And while Biden has assured that remaining 100 to 200 U.S. troops will be safely brought back without any deadlines, he has maintained a conspicuous silence over securing the lives of those who worked for the U.S. against the Taliban and now fear deadly reprisal attacks. By the time I came to office, the Taliban was in its strongest military position since 2001, controlling or contesting nearly half of the country. The previous administration's agreement said that if we stuck to the May 1st deadline that they had signed on to leave by. The Taliban wouldn't attack any American forces. But if we stayed, all bets were off. Entire world, barring a few, is apprehensive about recognizing the Taliban as a legitimate entity. While the European Union has said that it is in no hurry to recognize the Taliban, the United Nations, under the Indian chair last week, urged the Taliban to stick to its commitments and allow safe passage to anybody who looked for it. Currently, the Taliban control more territory than when they last ruled from 1996 to 2001 before U.S.-led forces ousted them in 2001. The Taliban are now also equipped with more sophisticated weaponry, including armored vehicles and attack helicopters. Although the Taliban has been projecting itself as a moderate version of its previous regime, the people and observers are not buying the argument. There are also reports that reprisal attacks and attacks on minority Hazaras have already begun, compelling thousands to flee the country. The Taliban say they are ready to run the government. However, it appears highly unlikely that people with no real education and experience can tread through the challenge. Afghanistan's economic situation, too, is in dire straits, with its currency plunging by almost 20 units against U.S. dollar in the past three weeks. Most of Afghans live under two dollars per day, and they blame the change in regime for their worsening lives. <laughs> Many offices and shops are still shut and salaries have been unpaid for weeks meaning even the relatively well-off are struggling to put food on the table. Experts say a humanitarian crisis looms over Afghanistan, which cannot be prevented with little generosity by its potential allies. 
and when the world is glued to the rapidly evolving Afghanistan situation, the question that continues to haunt Washington is what has it achieved after losing 2,500 of its troops along with 240,000 Afghans at an additional expenditure of some $2 trillion. The other question that remain unanswered is how CIA, the world's premier intelligence agency, failed in calculating the rapid advances of the Taliban, which according to it, were not going to affect Kabul in the next six months. It was all planned, some say. But commoners don't have any choice but to believe it until the US comes out with an alternate explanation.